Hi there, Alex T here again, and I really need to get a kickstand for that thing. Anyway, I'm here to give you another lesson on the environment. As you can see, I'm back in the great outdoors. If you're thinking this lesson has to do with forests, you're right. If you're thinking it's about protecting the environment, you're right. If you're thinking I learned my lesson in the last movie and I'm not going to cause any damage to nature this time, you are so wrong. Hmm. That's odd. Usually when I make an educational video, the janitor's here to help. I wonder where he's... Great. I don't think I want to say anything on the trail. <laughs> Holy crap, what was that? Ugh, ow. Dude, what is your problem? What are you talking about? Dude, you just nailed me at 20 miles an hour, sending me 60 feet into the air. Nonsense, I'm the safest guy out here. Says the guy who shot Solid Snake in the face with a magnum. What are you doing out here? I'm here to help you with your wildfire project. I was on my way to deliver these Pulaski's to the firefighters. If you were delivering Pulaski's, why is there a lightsaber in here? You know what? I think I forgot to take that out after your Lego sword fight movie. You know, I wonder if this thing still works. Easy. We don't need you causing any damage before the lesson even begins. Hmm. Awesome. It still works. Sweet. Ah, here we go again. You know what? I think I'll hang on to this. You never know when you'll need a lightsaber. So what do you say we get this lesson started already? Fine by me. Alrighty then. Now, wildfires are quite common in forest areas. They need three major elements to thrive. These elements include air, fuel, heat, and of course, the ignition! No, 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 you are not going to light anything up. Don't worry, I'm not going to light anything up yet. Now, wildfires can be started in a variety of ways, like lightning striking a tree, which is how a lot of them happen, a campfire growing out of control, or people just being plain stupid. Dude, that was nasty. Well, what's it to you? Dude, we're trying to protect the forest, which I know is weird coming from me. So what are you going to do about it? Would you like to ask that question again? Uh, is he going to be alright? He'll be fine. But this does bring up a good point. Should we control fires, or just let them burn? Let's take a brief look into the history books to get a better understanding of this concept. In 1910, a wildfire broke out in Idaho that consumed 3 million acres of timber. The weather was extraordinarily dry that summer, which really contributed to the fire. At that time, the only concept that was on the firefighter's mind was 100% suppression. The primary tool for firefighters was the Pulaski, created by Ed Pulaski in 1911. Ed Pulaski made the tool famous after he saved 45 firefighters during the incident. I bet you're wondering, if the tool was invented in 1911, how did he use it in 1910? Well, it turns out that there was a similar tool created by the Collins Tool Company in 1876, but Ed Pulaski made it famous after his incident in Idaho. So in a way, it's his idea. On August 5th, 1949, the concept of 100% suppression changed forever. In Mangulch, a group of smoke jumpers were sent in to extinguish what was supposed to be a small fire. Smoke jumpers were basically firefighters that parachuted into an area closest to the fire so they could put it out before it got any worse. The smoke jumpers at Mangulch weren't greeted by a small fire, instead they were greeted by a larger fire that was too big for them to put out. The smoke jumpers were forced to evacuate the area, but the fire was just too quick. It managed to catch up with them. Out of the 16 smoke jumpers that were sent to Mangulch, only 3 survived. Crosses were put up to commemorate those who lost their lives in the fire. After the incident, firefighters learned to just let wildfighters burn, because afterwards they discovered something truly amazing. A few weeks after the fire in Mangulch, new generations of plants started to pop up out of the charred ruins of the old forest. 
By letting the fire burn, it managed to take the nutrients inside the plants and recycle them back into the soil. It also made room for the second generation of plants. This sequence of plant generations, otherwise known as secession, plays a crucial role in keeping the plants healthy. With this information being known, forest rangers and firefighters began to think differently about 100% suppression. In 1988, the concept of let it burn was put to the test. Firefighters began to put prescribed fires inside Yellowstone to help recycle the nutrients and make room for the second generation of plants. As a result, a brand new generation of pine trees began to spring up after the fire. So based on what you've learned here, wildfires have both positives and negatives to them. So which concept do you favor? Well, for me, I'd have to go with both the concepts. You actually like both concepts? Yep. Really? Because when you look at it in a certain way, you see that one actually helps the other. First you set the fire to recycle the nutrients inside the ground and make room for the second generation of plants, and when you're finished, you can just put the fire out before it causes any more damage. All you need is a few men with Pulaski's, water, and drip torches, and you're set. Let it burn in 100% suppression is actually a pretty good combo, when you use it right. You catching my drift? I think so. But how would others look at your policy? Well, what do you mean? I mean, would others like your policy? Well, forest rangers might be upset that I destroyed their main attractions, and citizens would be upset if their homes got destroyed in the fire, the politicians would be up to their elbows in complaints about property damage, and the Native Americans would be upset that I desecrated their sacred land. Yeah, I'd be causing a lot of problems for others, but I do help the ecologists in a way. How's that? Follow me, I'll show you. You remember this place? Yeah, this is the grassland area you set on fire in your biome movie. And I had a great time doing it too. But look around. What do you see? Flowers growing out of your path of destruction. Exactly! By setting this place on fire, I managed to recycle the nutrients and make room for the second generation of plants that were going to be here. So, in a way, my path of destruction was actually a path of succession. You didn't know that, did you? You're just using it as an excuse for setting this place on fire. Yep. So, what else do we have to cover? Let me check. Uh, what persons, symbols, or organizations will you use to identify your policy? Oh, I got a good one. Great. What is it? Ta-da! Oh, you have got to be kidding me. It's Chuck Norris. Why him? Oh, come on. Haven't you seen the t-shirt? What t-shirt? The one that says only Chuck Norris can prevent forest fires. I figured it was better to have someone real than someone imaginary like Smokey the Bear. Now, imagine if I'm Chuck Norris. Hey, you with the black hair next to the old geezer. I got a bone to pick with you. See? Told you he'd be alright. Listen, I'm sorry about today, but you just can't light forest fires without knowing what you're doing. You could cause some major damage. I don't care. I'll do whatever I want, and now I'm gonna kick your butt. Well, if you are, you might want to tie your shoes first. Wait, I don't even wear shoes. So, are you gonna cause any more damage to nature now? Alright, alright, I won't. Jeez, man. You see? Not the best representative, but at least it gets the message out. So, what else do we need to do? Well, it says the information must have some artwork. 50% of the artwork should be in color. Well, pretty much this whole movie is artwork. And 99.9% .9 of it is actually in color. Then we're done. Really? Aw, oh, man, I really wanted to light something up. Why do you want to light something on fire so bad? Well, I don't think this video has enough entertainment in it, and I bet half the class is already asleep. Hello? Anyone out there? Zach? Carl? Brianna? Anyone still awake out there? Can you see me? Dan, you're too close to the camera. You're too blurry to see. Janitor, come in. We have a situation. Janitor, come in. The janitor here. What seems to be the situation? There's some human-like creature creating fires in the forest, and every time we put it out, it just creates more out of thin air. We need backup, now! Sounds like that kid again. I thought he learned his lesson. I don't think so. He said human-like and creating fire in a thin air. So, how do you propose we handle this situation? 